welcome back friends uh, in this video tutorial we, we are going to talking about uh, the activated sludge process no not actually activated sludge process basically we are going to talk about the secondary uh, treatment of uh, wastewater and in this treatment we are going to talk about a little bit okay a little bit about activated sludge process now the secondary treatment I remind you first is uh, the second treatment of wastewater treatment plant that means in the first round we have treated the wastewater with our uh, mechanical needs uh, with the help of the preliminary and primary treatment with the help of all those uh, scum removal then those grit chamber then uh, those uh, what you can say screeners and all these things we have we have uh, almost take up all those uh, particulate matters or the huge particulate ma matters out from this wastewater now the wastewater is consisting of small particulate matter and liquid part of the wastewater now in this secondary treat uh, then then we have uh, treated uh, this wastewater in in the primary treatment now in the primary treatment we have treated the water and right after the primary treatment mm, some of the particle matters are sus uh, are uh, sedimented but right after the primary treatment what is left onto this wastewater is the organic content for example the content of uh, nitrogenous content phosphorus content because the wastewater that we have taken is the human waste containing wastewater so in this case we are having phosphate contents as well as nitrogenous uh, waste so all these things are very very toxic for our cell as well as for uh, the fishes and all these things uh, for, for the river so in this case we need to take up uh, all this phosphate and nitrogen waste which are still present in this wastewater by treating them using this secondary wastewater treatment now in the secondary wastewater treatment what we have done we are, we are utilizing bacterial cells we are utilizing microorganisms that could be bacteria that could be protozoans and all these things we utilize these microorganisms they are very good for us they utilize all those uh, nutrients from the from the water as their nutrient source and as a result they uptake all them all of these from the water and they grow uh, rapidly vigorously and what we are doing we are actually sitting down and we are supplying the food for them the food is on the wastewater and we are supplying the the optimum environment for them to grow for example there are some microorganisms which uh, which love to grow in oxygenic environment so we give them sufficient aeration so in the secondary water treatment we have seen there is aeration basins in, in where we add all those microorganisms and the wastewater and also there are some microorganisms who who, lo uh, who love uh, anaerobic environment so in those cases we have made an anaerobic chamber inside where we, we have placed all this wastewater and we give those microorganisms who love uh, this anaerobic condition to grow on this site right so in this case what we can see the microorganisms are doing all the jobs so it's our duty to ensure that microorganisms can do their duty uh, without being disrupted by anything right so in this case this is the element element uh, comes from the primary water treatment and it enters into this chamber of uh, secondary water treatment now usually there, uh, there is no nothing chamber like this uh, there, there is no chamber like this such a such a way there are chambers like aeration chamber or aeration basin which is a round huge basin in where this water stays almost five to six hours which is a pretty long time during this wastewater processing now there are aeration tank which are totally covered uh, without uh, the access to uh, air so these are the different type of uh, structures uh, that that is not de uh, de defined here now in this case what is defined is a schematic presentation to understand uh, you or to tell you how the process is actually working now for example uh, so they don't take all these things for granted that there are three chambers they are linked all that nothing like uh, nothing <laughs> like that is happening actually okay so in this case what we're looking at the basic process and the chemical reactions actually and the principles behind utilizing these microorganisms that's all we ha will have other videos wh where we can see the actual uh, basins and all these things how uh, they look like and all these things right now in this case the bacteria is added onto this water now the bacteria start to grow and how the bacteria will grow with the with the help of fermentation techniques as we know fermentation is a technique uh, of bacterial cell to produce energy and to utilize its nutrient at the anaerobic condition when where there is no oxygen so if there is no oxygen in that case bacteria will, util will utilize the fermentation process to turn those nutrient and finally turn them into um, um, alcohol or organic acids 
acetic acid or something like that uh, so in this case they turn into organic acid so they take up the nutrient from this wastewater and turn into organic acids and a little bit amount of ammonia or ammonium uh, salts right now in this case is organic acid and uh, ammonium salts are uh, are being taken by some some type of bacteria and they what they can do they can utilize these organic acids too and by utilizing this organic acid they can uh, they can grow and they can produce carbon dioxide now in this case what they are doing they are utilizing it via uh, uh, organic or oxygenic process that means they utilize the oxygen of the air a little bit of oxygen and utilize it and break down the organic acids onto CO2 and N2 the nitrogen as a gas and carbon dioxide as a gas will leave the place into the atmosphere that's free to leave and in other cases this organic acid can also be converted into phosphoric uh, contents and ammonium contents now uh, now we have to deal with the phosphorus and ammonium content because we have, we have uh, make this rise uh, due to this previous two steps so finally what we have we are having the higher amount of phosphorus and nitrate con or nit ammonium component onto on this water both of them are really really dangerous for uh, for human body or for for any kind of animals uh, animal being right so what we have to do we need to uh, take them down the concentration of phosphate and ammonium uh, have to be uh, decreased uh, before decreasing this uh, uh, before releasing this water onto the stream now in this case what we'll do utilize another set of bacteria who are totally oxygen lover so we give them sufficient aeration air bubble is pumped out uh, pumped in as a result there is a lot of o o2 so, so they utilizes all this oxygen and they grow onto it and what what will they do they will take phosphorus and, and ammonium content because at that time at that point of time this water does not contain any other nutrient except for this phosphate and ammonium content so they have to take all this they will take this and they will convert it into nitrate components and we know this nitrate components can be settled down uh, and these nitrate components can also be uh, re-pumped up onto this previous step where the other bacteria will uptake this nitrate those, so those nitrate lover bacteria will uptake the nitrate and convert them into phosphate and ammonium so this is a process remember so nitrate can be recycled back because we want nitrate to gone and convert into ammonium because we have the bacteria to convert the ammonium and uh, phosphate mm, group onto the the nitrate group at the final point okay so they will produce it and th this nitrate will circulate among it and some amount of nitrate can be also settled down utilizing chemical treatment which is uh, right after the secondary treatment um, plant which is called the tertiary treatment now as a result of this we can see there are several types of bacteria that we have to use during this secondary treatment some of the bacteria uh, are very good at utilizing uh, this nutrient source at the anaerobic conditions some of the bacteria are very good at utilizing nitrate components and organic acid components and they can also generate methane which is a gas which can uh, help us to run uh, some of the generators and all these things so we can utilize those methane gas uh, which is generated by bacteria in some cases not all the cases but methane gas most of the methane gas are generated during this uh, this wastewater treatment during the activated sludge or during the sludge treatment procedures not in this case but still some bacteria can also act on to this organic acid and they can produce methane gas uh, which can be flammable in this case and we can utilize it and we can utilize the energy stored on the methane gas and can run few few generators or few current or electricity or something like that okay now uh, in in the third type of bacteria what we can see they can utilize only phosphate and ammonium content and they can turn into nitrate and they can grow onto it by utilizing all these things so bacteria are very happy because they can grow they have sufficient nutrients and we are also very happy because uh, our goal is achieved because the bacteria do, do, did the job for us that's very very good thing now right after all these things this uh, all of this treatment plan so aeration basin or anaerobic treatment plan the effluent will go and on to another thing which is called secondary clarifier which is pretty big in this case now in the secondary clarifier as a result of this bacterial activity uh, all those small uh, particles will start to uh, arrange with themselves they make a huge lump like structure they start to sediment uh, to make a gradient or sediment they start to sediment it, uh, in, in this uh, secondary clarifier due to the gravitational force now they start to sediment onto it and uh, this is called the sludge as we know now this sludge uh, some amount of this sludge uh, y and most of the this sludge is taken as a sludge uh, to through the sludge treatment procedure to go through it because the sludge need to be treated it has to be dried it has to be thickened uh, in first case it has to be digested then it has to be thickened then it has to be dried and then it is uh, uh, that it will become a very important uh, ingredient too uh, as a uh, soil conditioner right but uh, but some of this uh, sludge is re uh, shifted back towards this 
uh, previous uh, strand it is reshifted back towards uh, this zone uh, this 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 secondary uh, secondary system again why because this sludge contains a very very uh, rich source of nutrients uh, this sludge contains nitrogenous waste it contains phosphorus waste and also the nitrate waste most most importantly now why it is uh, important to shift this back onto this secondary treatment again because why do we want that because this bacteria cell need to need to grow now we want this bacteria to take up all the nutrients from this water they they are doing all these things but still uh, uh, right after a few round of this uh, wastewater treatment there are few fewer nutrients left onto this water uh, that can be uptaken by bacteria so we need to feed the bacteria otherwise this bacteria will start to dry so that's why we need to give this activated uh, some amount of sludge which contains the nutrients so it keep uh, the balance of nutrients onto the secondary aeration basin or anaerobic uh, treatment uh, system whatever we are using so that's why we need to back give back some amount of sludge that's the first thing and second thing is that there is a pump or rotor is there so when when the water flow is blocked this this uh, this uh, this sludge system helps it to grow on so this is the two these are the two reasons which are actually helping it to do that but but most important reason is that that we need this we need to ensure that bacteria must grow and if the nutrient source falls if the nutrient concentration falls it will be very difficult for bacteria to grow so that's why uh, we we are shifting this uh, active uh, this sludge into the uh, into the medium that that, that bacteria can uptake the nutrients from it too so that is why we are using all these things so that is why it's called the activated sludge process because the sludge what we have uh, we are uptaken from the secondary clarifier basins now we uh, some amount of the sludge is reshifted back towards uh, towards uh, this secondary treatment again towards uh, so reshifting of the sludge which is still activated th that's why it's called activated because it is active the sludge we are shifting back it is so active that it can uh, again sustain the growth of bacteria onto it that's why we call it activated sludge now again all all this round this sludge will come and again uh, it will start to settle down onto it and again some amount of this sludge will be taken and onto this sludge treatment process and some amount of uh, some amount of sludge will be again reshifted back towards this secondary treatment plant so that's how it's working okay so you can see the zone of how we are doing it one is the anaerobic zone one is the anoxic zone and third one is the oxygen rich zone for the oxygen rich zone in the secondary treatment we are having the aeration basins and in the anoxic zone we are having small uh, basins which are without uh, air but still it is open uh, access and the and the first one in this case we are seeing anaerobic zone which is totally covered which is uh, air cannot access this place right so that is why uh, these three different groups of bacteria can be can use uh, these three different types of nutrient sources and they can finally convert into less toxic product and we can uh, utilize chemical treatment to settle all these um, chemical uh, nutrients like nitrates and all these things down and finally we can give uh, the pure water to the downstream right to to the downstream processor so that's a very very important part okay so finally right after all these things the clarified water can be uptaken and this is uptaken towards the tertiary treatment because uh, most of the most of the water is totally pollutant free right after the secondary treatment so some of those uh, plants uh, might not have any primary treatment so just start with the pre secondary treatment and go with the tertiary now the tertiary treatment is important why because in the secondary treatment we have used lots of microorganisms and microorganisms can be dangerous as we know they can be pathogens so we need to kill those microorganisms which are present in the water so in this case we need to have chemical treatment onto this uh, microorganisms to kill them so we we do this in uh, this tertiary treatment so utilize chemicals like uh, chlorination and sulfur dioxide addition to kill all those bacteria which are present and we can also settle down uh, those particles like nitrate and all this particles which remains right after the treatment of oxygen rich re uh, tank and we can utilize some of the chemicals which will fuse with this and uh, make a precipitate of it and we can have the precipitate out and the fresh water can be sent towards the uh, lakes or streams right so that's that's that is all about uh, the secondary treatment and i hope it will help you thank you